Oh, yes, we are freaking at the Freakers Ball. Y'all. <laughs> Welcome, folks. This is Friday Night Air, August 30, 2019. We're, we're, this is the Freakers Ball. We're live right now uh, at this particular time right here. If you are listening live, you could be listening on a recording, in which case me saying we're live is a lie. But if you're <laughs> but if you're not listening to a recording, then yeah, we are. Uh, anyway, welcome everybody out there to the Freakers Ball in all the various places you may be listening in from, uh, which could be anywhere. But hopefully, you're right here on RealLibertyMedia.com dot com on the Freakers Ball show page, or if not, maybe you're on the Vaughn Vaughn dot live slash Real Liberty Media, uh, checking out the video end from there. Because we are there as well, and uh, we we if we have the audio, if you're on the audio stream, you could be at any of a number of places, including realliberty.org, freedomsnetwork.com, rlmradio.xyz, tune in, uh, internet radio, shoutcast.com, all, all kinds of spots all, all over the place. So welcome to y'all out there in all those various places, to whoever you are, wherever you are, wherever you may be. Hopefully you're ready for a Freaker's Ball, because it's time. <laughs> All right, Blue Girl's here in the chat. I think she'll be calling in. I hope she will anyway. Uh, shortly, soon, hopefully, probably. Uh, we'll, we'll see. Yeah, I, 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 I. <laughs> anyway, so let me say hi and howdy to all the folks over here in the, the chat on uh, this wonderful evening. Oh, man. Uh, earlier tonight, by the way, before I get into that, we... Uh, we had Grammy, uh, Grammy, Grammy's Rocket Chair, the last show of that, uh, at least for a while, as they, as is being said. So I, I can't say for sure she'll never come back and do another Gra Grammy's Rocket Chair, but, but, but she, she might. I, I don't know. Um, and, and if she does, it'll probably be uh, the like the beginning of, of next year when she does a, another Rocket Chair, if that happens. Uh, or maybe she'll do a different show. I don't know. Maybe maybe she she'll come back and do a different show. We'll see. Anyway, we're gonna miss Grammy, and uh, we love Grammy and, and appreciate all of the wonderful shows she did for us over the many years that she was here broadcasting on RLM. Howdy, Moose Girl. Howdy. How the heck you doing? I'm do hanging in there. Hanging in there. Well, that's good. Hanging hanging no, in there. No, better than not hanging in there, I guess. Yeah, you're, you're like that. You're you're like that that cat in the poster. Yep. Hang in there, baby. Exactly what I am doing right now. Hang exactly. in there, baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good, 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 good. <laughs> I'm still kicking, so there you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's always that's a, that's a, that's a bonus. It is. Oh, it is a bonus. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, yeah, so Grammy finished her last show, so. Aww. Yeah. Gonna miss you, Grammy. Yep, 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 yep. Indeed. Anyway, I'm um, just getting ready to say hi and howdy to the folks there in the chat. Yeah. Yeah, you wanna you wanna you wanna run them down or? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Okay. No, uh, I don't see the point in doing that. I uh, really don't well, because there, 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 um, there's really no point. But when there are chanting anyway, well, you know, you I know, don't see I, the point of going through the whole list when that's all right. That's all right. Most some people aren't even chat, actively they, chatting. They, I mean, they they may listen later. They may. They may. But so, most of them, a lot of them in there, don't say anything well, either. I, I so know. I, I have no idea what they do. <laughs> no, I think. I think they are. I think most of them talk. Anyway, we got, we, got, we, got, we, got, we got the barman and the beetle and Mr. Cowboy Tech, who is a man of few words by nature. We yeah. Have, we have yourself and myself in there. We got DC brackets, outside outside brackets, DC. And yes, he does in the chat. Mr. Anti and Asmo and Beth, they all chat. Yeah. Chalcedony, from time to time, will speak up and say a few words. Miss Graham Z is hanging out with her daughter. Hey, Grammy daughter. Uh, Hi, Grammy and Grammy daughter. <laughs> yes, indeed. We got the Java doctor and uh, we got. How's that place will be? <laughs> we got the Java doctor and Meister Meister Brow, the poop star and Prince, who did their show 
their second show last night. Oh, boy, them, them crypto crazies. Let me tell you, we got Miss Kate, and uh, she's uh, looking at the storm heading her direction. Yes, indeed. Um, <laughs> she'll be hanging in the chat. She'll be around, but just not on the airwaves to tickle our funny bones, as she normally does. We got Mr. Rob Works in the Magic Bubbler. Yes, indeed, in Rome's in uh, Vanna White Bot. Vinny Vibrato. I haven't heard him sing today. I have heard him sing previously, and yeah, no, no more of that. Oh, we got W four GKV. <laughs> Whoa, what's that noise? Sorry, sorry. <laughs> we got Moosey Vibrato too. Oh uh, no, shit! <laughs> Are you started? Oh my god! We got, we got sorry, the, dude. <laughs> we got the weather dork and Phantom and CC sixty six or Crazy Toy and sixty six. If you will. Uh, Chostura and Cyborg and uh, Mr. N. The Civ there from the Bob Coin and other places. Uh, we got the Frumpster, Frumpy, Gromit, Mr. JJ. Hey, Scotland boy, how you doing out there? Uh, Matt WJ2002, uh, Mr. Ponder Gunder. Also, don't want to hear you sing either. Uh, we got Ponesauce in real. <laughs> The real Donnie Woo, the sock puppet, also looking at that storm heading right to his house. Big old Dorian coming for him, the smart as, and the holiest Roger. Yes, indeed, he's uh, also a member of the Prince and Booster crew. Well, not on, the, right. radio, not on the radio, but, you know, hanging around, hanging yeah. around. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you know y'all here in uh, the chat? So, yeah, I think everybody in here chats at some time or another, man. Uh, I, yeah, I, I, haven't, I haven't seen anybody in here that has not never chatted uh, at the present time, anyway. So, yeah, chatters, yeah. chatters, chatters deluxe, chatters delight. Uh, so it was hot today, ninety three or something like that. Wow, that too. yeah, that is hot. Still summer, still summer. Apparently, though, this being Labor Day weekend is the official. End of, end of summer, summer, but not the actual end of summer. Right, no. Um, yeah, because Moe's missing, right? Because uh, <laughs> he don't chat, or she, or it, whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, uh, but, uh, yeah, so it's still still warm out here, it's still warm, so uh, that's still good for the garden, the garden's growing. I got, uh, I got at least uh, three watermelons going, that's, that's, well, that's kind of exciting. And uh, and I got uh, a couple of three cantaloupes going. I got I don't know maybe a dozen or so tomatoes going. And uh, cool stuff growing. Yeah. Now I I don't know. I I told you I had a head of lettuce growing before prior. Mm-hmm. Well, it, it's still a lettuce plant, but it's not a head. It grew up into this tall, big stalk with these things coming out of the top. And apparently, and I looked it up, um, that's going to be a seed plant. All right, cool. Which I guess I'd be able to harvest those seeds and use them next year. I, yeah, I believe that's the case. Because I, 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 I was expecting a, like a head of lettuce to grow there, and it didn't. It just it grew, right. It was just like a it, seed it, thing. It grew up to this 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 like a big cone. Then the thing grew out of the top of it, and then all, yeah. these, all these little yeah, yeah. branches that look. Yeah, like, I know what you mean. Yeah, they, they look like they're gonna flower or something. Right. <laughs> Anyway, whatever. It was weird. Not that I'm a real big fan of lettuce in the first place, but eh, eh, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, you know, um, it, you know, it's a learning thing. It is a learning oh, thing, and I and as you know, I, I, I'm getting more than I expected. Uh, the, the yeah, so you you were successful. Your first try at it was successful. Yeah, minimally successful. That's that's better than failing completely. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> so, you know, um, good for you. Yeah, so whatever. So, oh, go ahead. Now, now, I don't know if you know or if anybody else knows. Night, Rob. Have a sleep well there, Ben, dude. Um, all right. So, uh, anyway, um, I don't know if you know or not, but can you save, like, certain plants? Through the winter, like 
Yeah. You can, like dig them up out of the dirt and put them in a pot and then... And well, you can do cuttings. Well, they're not really big enough for cuttings. Uh, so that's what I'm saying. Uh, but yeah, like, by the way, I got like I got my like strawberry plants. Grandma, Grammy would probably know my, my stra- strawberry plants and my jalapenos. They're, they 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 haven't grown large enough, but um, I think if I saved them and let them like and put them in inside the patio throughout the winter, um, that maybe they'd grow next year. I, I, I mean, I don't know. They look healthy. They're just so small. So I, I don't know if those things are right. Grow. <laughs> All right. Uh, whatever, we'll see. Um, <laughs> just something to think about. Oh man! So anyway, yay! So uh, and your boy is heading off to college. What was going on there? He's going to school. Back what, to school. Uh, at at uh, University of Eau Claire, or what was it called? Stout. Stout. Yeah, it's in Menominee. Oh, okay. Okay. Cool. Twenty miles from Eau Claire. It's not like it's. Two days away or something, you know. Right, right, right. But he's gonna live there in the dorm. Yep. Okay. Yep. Great. Summer just flew by. And, and the other boy. Staying here. All right. Going to school, but staying here. Okay. Okay. So yeah, um, I'm surprised it's Labor Day weekend already. Okay. It's been crazy. It's been. I mean, the summer just flew by, dude. I I can't even believe it. Like. It's already getting down in the 40s here at night. Oh, well, not here yet. It's uh, Like right now, it is 55. Yeah, it's bottoming out in the 50s here, but... Uh, it's only supposed to be a low of 48, yeah, so that's yeah. not too bad. Let's see here. We got we got a low of 56, so... Um, that's, yeah, that's all right. But uh, still getting them highs in the in the upper or the oh, low, yeah. lower, I mean, lower 90s. Much Highs in the lower 90s and, and, and lows in the mid-50s, so. Yeah, cool. Yeah, pretty much um, my favorite time of year is the fall time. So this is awesome. It's like yeah. my favorite oh, month. Yeah. September is like my favorite month. Wow. So hopefully it'll be nice. Yeah, you'll yeah, well, you you get a different kind of a fall than we do, but. Yeah. Yeah, October, early November, it's still kind of fallish. And then. November, middle of November, it starts getting cold and snowy. Right. Same here. <laughs> so, anyway, you cool. Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fun, fun. So, um, anyway. Yes. How are you doing? Well, you told me about your garden, but. Yeah, no, I'm doing fine. Everything's good. I, I, I gotta say, I am not a big fan of holiday weekends. Um, okay. Because, like, you know, if I order stuff, it takes days extra to get here. <laughs> <laughs> and I seem to. And I never never remember it's a holiday weekend, so I uh, order something, and then I was like, hey, how come this isn't? Oh, yeah, yeah, freaking holidays. Freaking holidays. Yeah. And, and Labor Day. What the hell? What the hell is Labor Day for, really? It's It's just a day off. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I guess barbecues or whatever. Right. But, but then, you know, coming along with any holiday, and it doesn't even necessarily need to be a holiday, but of course, every holiday, you, know, you always hear this thing on the radio, the cops are going to be out in force, they're coming to get you, they want to take, take you in. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking pigs, man. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, no, I, I hate that thing, man. They're, they're always like, there's a bunch of jackboots out there, and, yep. you know, and they advertise... Yeah, they do. Gonna, they say we're gonna be um, have extra staff on. We're gonna be setting up speed traps. Yeah, all this crap, man. It's like I tell you, total. But people still do it. Total uh-huh. militarized state, man. Uh, what? Totally militarized state. Oh yeah. Hey, thanks for that, there, uh, cyborger. Winterize your garden. Let me let me let me save some of these links for a later. Yeah. For later reading, because uh, I don't have time to read them right now. But uh, thanks, sock band, soccer, soccerino. <laughs> <laughs> uh, be bold. That's it. Oh, from uh, New, New Mexico State. Uh, all right. Yeah, they're a big uh, agriculture school down there in New Mexico State. And as a matter of fact, their team's called the Aggies. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> all right, anyway, <laughs> enough jawing around about that. Let's play some music. Uh, all right. Get this Let's kick, get this thing kicked off in the proper direction. Alrighty. This is a young man by the name of Gary Clark Jr. Nice. Yeah. Thank you. Alright. Hey, hey. Guess what? Those guys rock. Yes, indeed, they do. Ronnie James Dio and band doing We Rock. Rest in peace. Rock in peace, Mr. Dio. Before that, we had Steve Earle uh, doing Midnight Rider and a good little story ahead of that, uh, ahead of him playing there at the House of Strombo. That, that's, that's cool stuff, man. Steve Earle, much respect. All right, we kicked it off with Gary Clark uh, Jr. doing Numb from, oh, many years ago. Uh, about six years ago now. Yeah, no. <laughs> you there, Moose? Uh, moose, moose, moose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. There she is. <laughs> Man, that's yeah. with my microphone thing. Oh, okay. I'm going to get it clipped on, but it's not working right. Uh, 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 okay. Oh, well. Anyway, yeah, I'm here. All right. So how would you like so, that? How would you like Florida that? Florida is getting... Bracing, apparently, for, let's see, the latest is a Category 4 turn, uh, turn, hurricane. Yeah. Um, yep. Dorian. 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 Yeah. And I've seen a bunch of memes on Facebook about they hope it hits Mar-a-Lago. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, people. I tell you, man, these people are, these, these people are rough. <laughs> what? I said, these people are rough. Right. Yeah, they they, they like they got they got uh, they they don't care, you know, anything whatever it takes to to do something bad to Trump, you know. Right. <laughs> yeah. You no, know, it's like, come on. Uh, yeah. Let's see here. Uh, the, the last late Friday, the National Hurricane Center's projected new track showed Dorian hitting near Fort Pierce some 70 miles north of Mar-a-Lago, then running along the coastline as it moved north. Right. But for forecasters cautioned that the storm's trend was still highly uncertain, and could, even a small deviation could put Dorian offshore or well inland. So they just really don't know right now like, where exactly it's going to hit. Uh, right. No, they have no idea. It's, I mean, it's a wide range that they're... Yes. They're picking up. And I talked to my mom earlier, who's back down in Florida now, and she's on the Tampa side, too, like Kate. Yeah. And she says she's not too worried. She says, though, that they went and bought some water, and everyone's buying water, and that there's no more bread left, and everyone's in line for gas, and people are preparing, apparently. Um but it says a new model. I'm looking at a different link here. The new model predicts that 7.5 million Florida residents will lose power as a result of Hurricane Dorian. 7.5 million. Uh, that's a guess. You know, they, they don't really know. Right. They, 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 they have no but, idea. you know, dude, if one, if one, if the major, you know, transformers or whatever go out, yeah. it takes a while to get them fixed, you know. Right. Whoops, this video started automatically, sorry. Okay, and then, um, I mean, they have to warn people. They have to, like, think big and hope small, you know what I mean? Sure, sure, absolutely, you know. <laughs> but, I mean, because people think that they can, they're a match for Mother Nature somehow. I, I don't know why they would think that, but um, it says, let's see here, um... The faint, encouraging signs came at the end of a day in which Dorian seemed to get scarier with each forecast. It strengthened into a Category 4 hurricane, and there were fears it could prove to be the most powerful hurricane to hit Florida's east coast in nearly 30 years. Right. Uh, uh, it says, um, this is a tweet from a meteorologist. Hurricane Dorian has developed an eye, expecting it to become a major hurricane today. 
Uh, nothing currently stopping the storm from reaching Category 5. There, I said it. And that was um, meteorologist Christopher Nunley. Hurricane Dorian is developing an eye. Major hurricane likely today. Wouldn't be su surprised if Dorian intensifies into Category 5 over the weekend. Take this, for this seriously. This is a life-threatening hurricane. Yeah, the thing is, though, since they don't know where it's going to land... They can't yeah. tell who to evacuate. You but if you look at the picture on this link, Grim, yeah. the, if you scroll down the very first picture, that does not look good. No, I mean, it, but it, it could, I suppose it could spin out to sea. Well, yeah, well, yeah, it know. looks like it's right coming right for it. I mean, it just looks ominous. Right, but, yeah, they, they just, I, I mean, they, they don't know. Um, it, it is a big one. Yeah, um, it's big. But, uh, yeah, so they they don't know where it's going to go. But, I mean, since they don't, they can't tell. Oh, who, here's all the models. Kate posted the link here. Uh, they can't tell who. Oh, wow. That's they, all over the place, Kate. They, they can't tell who to evacuate, you know. it's uh, Right. Because, I mean. It says do not use this map to make decisions. Right. Seek official info. Yeah, you, you can't, you can't uh, evacuate right. all, all of Florida. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean. Even though all of Florida is in this big red blob. Um, yeah, I've yeah. never experienced that. I've never lived in an area that has hurricanes. So no we have I. tornadoes up here, and those are pretty deadly as well. So yeah. or can be very destructive. So it, and it, deadly. It, it could it could cut across the, the southern end of Florida, get out to the Gulf, rebuild, and then and right. Then, and then head that would back, be not a good scenario. And then head back towards Florida, or it could cruise off into the Gulf somewhere and. You know, maybe maybe it'll be up Mississippi, New Orleans, wherever. Right, right. You know, they they don't know, um, and they're they're not very good guessers at this thing apparently because. Uh, yeah, Kate. Yeah, she'll use that map before she uses the quote unquote official info, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, but uh, yeah. And, so, uh, and again, another reason to hate uh, the uh, hate and love, I guess. At the same time, the uh, holiday weekends. Uh, first, you got right. to love them because these people that don't want to be working on the holidays have to work. Um, uh, but but then hate, hate them because if if you do actually need something, it's a holiday and 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 stuff's not available. So. Uh, so they say in the Tampa area on this Daily Mail link, thirty six percent wind damage. So that's light compared to the other side. Which is fifty five percent in Miami and fifty percent in Melbourne. Right. Well, but, I don't know, because uh, Tampa's a secondary market there. If that's if that's yeah. where you want to look at it, uh, because uh, you know it's got to get across Florida. Right. But before it can get to Tampa, so. Right. Exactly. Uh, and, and you know the land always you know takes some of the juice out of a hurricane, so. Um, right. So apparently NASA had to uh, move their, uh, what's it called? Hang on a second. They had to move some tower. Let's see. At NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Cape Canaveral, NASA moved a 380-foot-high mobile launch platform to the safety of the colossal vehicle assembly built. That Steam video keeps playing. I want to... Yeah, anyway, yeah. they're calling. They have this building there. Apparently, the Colossal Vehicle Assembly Building. It's not. It's 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 a colossal size vehicle assembly building built to withstand 125 mile per hour winds. <laughs> the launcher is is for the mega rocket that NASA is developing to take astronauts to the moon. Ah, uh, okay. So that's what they. I don't know why they added that in there, but they did. <laughs> I'm looking. I'm looking at. I'm looking at site. this. I'm looking at this map that Kate put up there. And I, mm -hmm. I, I like this green track, this lime green track. Right, he kind of does a circle. Like. Yeah, yeah, it <laughs> cuts up across into central northern Florida there. Right. Uh, for, from from like uh, uh, Fort Lauder Fort Lauderdale, is that where that is? Uh, and yeah, across the, across to St. Pete, rolls downward and then back up, right. back up uh, in, in through Miami there. And then they back out to the end of the Atlantic. Right. Yeah. It's, uh, Who came up with that one? <laughs> I, I don't know. That's, that's kind of a crazy track of, of all of them. But uh, you got some of them that just show it, turn it upward, never hit nothing. You know? Right. So, yeah. Some of them are just out in the sea. 
Yeah, so. But uh, hopefully everyone's safe and every, all our friends that live down there. Yes, indeed. From the RLM channel are are good and um, hang bunker down, hunker down. I guess, huh? Bun- hunker in the bunker. Yep, something like that. <laughs> but I can't imagine. I mean, to me, that's one downfall of Florida or living in any place that is susceptible to hurricanes. Possibly is just having to upend your life if you have to evacuate. Right. Like that would suck. You know. I mean, and I get it. You you can't control mother nature. You can't control a shit that happens. Like. You know, we it could happen here. I mean, something could happen to make have I have to evacuate. You know, yeah. but um, it just would seem like I would get tired of it after a while. You know, sure. I'd be like, oh, not again. You know what I mean? Right, right. Now, do they? I don't know. Do they get hurricanes? They don't get hurricanes in Florida every year, right? No, not every no. year. No, oh, but there's hurricanes hit somewhere every year. Usually, yeah. Generally, I mean, there's some hurricanes every year, and and whether whether they whether they uh, you know go up into the Gulf and go to like Houston or or, or New Orleans or Mississippi wherever, or just into Mexico, <laughs> Mexico from there, Cause they can go anywhere along the whole Gulf Coast if they go in that way, or or they can go up and further north. Uh, they're they're um, on the Atlantic coast and, and hit any of those cities, you know, like up where Gary lives or where Beetle lives or right, right. Um, anywhere, or they can, they can go right down in there and, uh, do that. You know, they can hit smack Cuba and Jamaica and all those places. Apparently in Puerto Rico, it went, it went over that, but it didn't damage it at all. It was well, not nothing. At all, it was a tropical storm yeah, at that point, yeah, apparently. Was, yeah, nothing really happened. no, so, um, but they were, you know, oh, it's gonna, it's gonna tear it. Yeah, I bet it didn't. It um, didn't do anything. <laughs> but so all we can do is wait yeah, until, until right. you know, and it's a very slow moving storm going like ten it miles, is. ten miles per hour. Uh, yep. al- although the 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 wind speeds are up there, one hundred and ten something like that. Right. Um, so it's it's just churning and burning out there and collecting up power as it as it goes. So yeah. Uh, you know, like so, all we can do is wait and see and hope for the best for our friends and other folk out there. That um... on the flip side, yes. this is from a site called PenLive. dot like, com. Like Pennsylvania. It must be yeah, P A Live. Okay. Uh, August twenty eighth, so Wednesday. Yeah. Snow overload. Expected for winter 2019-20. This old farmer's almanac. Okay. Oh, this is about Pennsylvania, but um, yeah, they're calling for a bad winter again. And this might be more about New England, but I read that it's going to be bad here too, Wisconsin. So yay. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was kind of a mild winter last year, so. What? It was kind of a mild winter here last year. Yeah, not here. Not here at all. Yeah. So, yay. Something to not look forward to. Right, right. But uh, see how it goes. That's all you can do. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah. It's like, I'm not looking forward to it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. But... Hockey will be around then, so it won't be all bad. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I found this site. I wasn't here last week. And I think this is really, it's kind of funny, but it's kind of real. Right. I mean, I think it's, there. there's truth to it. Okay. Um, and this, it's calling, the site is called callingbullshit.org. Oh, yeah, I saw that site. Somebody else posted no, that. Bullshit. Yeah, someone posted in the chat. Yeah. I believe it was the chat. I'm not sure. I can't remember who. Right. But anyway, it's it's kind of funny. But it says, the world is awash in bullshit. Politi- politicians are unconstrained by facts. Science is conducted by press release. Higher education rewards bullshit over analytic thought. Startup culture evaluates bullshit to high art. Advertisers wink conspiratorially and invite us to join them in seeing through all the bullshit. 
and take advantage of our lower guard to bombard us with the bullshit of the Second Order. Anyway, goes on to say, we're sick of it. It's time to do something. As educators, one constructive thing we know how to do is teach people. So the aim of this course is to help students navigate the bullshit rich modern environment by identifying bullshit, seeing through it, and combating it with effective analysis and argument. What do we mean exactly by bullshit and calling bullshit? As a first approximation, bullshit involves language, statistical figures, data graphics, and other forms of presentation intended to persuade by impressing and overwhelming a reader or listener with a blatant disregard for truth and logical coherence. Two, bull well, not two, but calling bullshit is a performan per performant performative utterance, a speech act in which one publicly repudiates something objectionable. objectionable. The scope of targets is broader than bullshit alone. You can call bullshit on bullshit, but you also can call bullshit on lies, treachery, trickery, or injustice. In this course, we will teach you how to spot the former and effective, effectively perform the latter. So then I looked at the syllabus. Okay. And the modules are Introduction to Bullshit, Spotting Bullshit, The Natural Ecology of Bullshit, Casuality, Statistical Traps, Visualization, big data, publication bias, predatory publishing and scientific misconduct, the ethics of calling bullshit, fake news, and refuting bullshit. So I think I'm going to check into this. All right. I'm, I'm a little skeptical just by the fact that these guys are, are located, they're college professors from the University of University Washington. University of Washington. In, in Seattle. <laughs> yes. In Seattle. <laughs> Uh, so I, I'm I'm a little skeptical on the yeah. whole deal there, uh, because what what they may consider bullshit might actually be real, and what they consider real. Right, exactly. Um, what they're what they just said, really. Right, right there, right. Yeah. But anyway, there's 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 a whole there's a syllabus, there's videos, there's tools, all these things on here. You know, I might just check into it. I'm not saying it's the end all be all by any stretch. But uh, like you said, you know, these are professors from the University of Washington. Yeah, which tend, so, to, which tend to be, you know, the most, uh, I hate to say left-leaning, but I don't know another word for it. Right. Um. <laughs> now, I noticed how they put the term fake news in there as one of their modules. Yeah, so uh, who knows? Who knows? Anyway, it might be something. Might might be something worthy. We'll, we'll have to see. Right, you know, I just thought that was kind of well, funny. Well, here, here's you. You start doing that, and then you report back to us. Okay. On 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 uh, on, on what you. Uh, on what I say. Okay. Yeah, because uh, you know. Um, okay. If they if they, so, if they if they start telling you about about global warming, then then I know it's bullshit. <laughs> then they're calling bullshit is bullshit, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Then I can bullshit the bullshitters. <laughs> Uh, well, cool. Right. That would be cool. All right. So anyway, um, not sure. Uh, I know you might have talked about it last week. I did not listen to last week. Why is this video playing, motherfucker? Anyway, okay. All right. Okay. So this is from two days ago on the Independent. Dot okay. u. Well, dot it was co. Dot it was, it's from two days ago. I definitely didn't talk about it last week. All right. Oh, oh no shit. No, I, I just see that it's two days ago. I, I thought I saved this, like, last week. But anyway, maybe not. Okay, so anyway, um, there's a climate crisis. More fires are burning across <laughs> Central Am Africa than Amazon as global deforestation rates approach record high. Uh, while focus has slowly grown on the fires ravaging the Amazon rainforest in Brazil, it has emerged that an even greater number of fires are currently burning in Central Africa. Data from NASA's Fire Information for Resource Management System show at least 6,902 fires in Angola and 3,395 burning in the Democratic Republic of Congo. That The same data puts Brazil's fire at 2,127. Okay, so but, but how, how does that uh, compare historically, say, the last 100 years? I'm not sure. I You know. Yeah, because I, I but mean... It, you know, because there's always big fires going on down there. Well, you know, every... Right. This, this time of year. Uh, so... Yeah. It'd be interesting to see. I mean... Well, it says the forest fires in Brazil have lar also largely been caused by agricultural activity as landowners burn stubble after harvest. 
use illegal slash and burn clearing techniques to create land for crops or rearing beef or have carried out logging to raise the value of the land. So they do sometimes uh, purposely set the fires. Right. And, uh, yeah. yeah. To clear some out, sure. Which they can get out of control, though, you know, oh, no as doubt, any no, fire can. No, no doubt, no doubt. Uh, oh, it might hug the coast. Oh, that would be good. Well, not really. I mean, it would tear up all the coastal cities. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Don't, not hug it, but hopefully be a, out, you know, in the ocean or whatever. A very loose hug. <laughs> yeah, very, um, yeah, very non-hug. <laughs> Yeah. But uh, let's see what else I have. To so see. Where, where's the link for that? Where's the link for that? Oh, let me get that. Yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm skeptical of those things. However, I did hear, uh, and I think I talked what? about last week. Uh, I will. The president of one of those countries might have been Brazil, um, so, somewhere down there that uh, definitely was doing some pretty nasty stuff. Uh, in the Amazon, um, yeah. Uh, so um, and and trying to uh, deny that he was doing a bunch of nasty stuff, but he was. Um, so uh, right. Yeah. So. Um, All right. So here's another. Are you were you done? Yeah, I was just commenting. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. So here is another story that I saved. And this, I know it's from the Daily, but I have other links, so they're not Daily Mail links. Okay, so just <laughs> bear with me here. This one is the first one I'm going to read about. It says it's from the Daily Mail, okay. August 23rd, All right. 2019. All right. The headline is "Deadly Zombie Deer Disease in the U.S. That Rots Its Victims' Brains Could Spread to Humans Who Eat Venison." Yeah. What? Yeah, I just agree. Yeah. yeah. Okay. A fatal so-called zombie disease swiftly spread in the United States and Canada among deer, elk, and moose might help put might put humans at risk if they eat the, the disease venison. Chronic wasting disease causes e elk and deer to stop eating and behave in confused, confused ways as their brains are turned into sponges by abnormal proteins. The slowly incubating disease, which leaves microscopic holes in the animal's brain, is caused by pyrons. Uh, they are the same rogue proteins Pyron. that cause bovine Spongiform encephalopathy. I can't say that word. Encephalopathy. Okay, so instead or of mad cow it, disease. Yeah, so instead of mad cow, it's mad moose. Right, or mad deer, or mad elk. <laughs> so there's that one. Let me just link that one. Right. Yeah. Then I wanted to investigate further because I'm like, okay, well that's a Daily Mail link, so I better. Uh, it it's, it's definitely going to mess with your fish in there, sock. Find uh, some better <laughs> fucking articles that are like closer to home. Uh huh. So then I found this one. This is from Eyewitness News KSCP in Minneapolis. KSCP dot com. Okay. DNR expands mandatory CWD testing for deer hunters. Sets open houses to explain changes. So it says certain changes are coming for deer hunters in certain parts of Minnesota this fall. It all has to do with the controlling with controlling the spread of chronic wasting disease. Uh, the DNR told Eyewitness News it is working to communicate better and be more transparent about its CWD response plan to make sure wild deer in Minnesota are disease-free. And so, for the 2019 deer season, mandatory CWD testing is expanded in a new hunting zone in central Minnesota around a deer farm where deer tested positive for it. And it's also expanding south eastern Minnesota, where they've been finding it in wild deer for years. Okay. And this year, the zone is all the way down to the Iowa border. Let's see. It says, most of the people down there are continuing to hunt, especially if they're getting the free sampling done. Um, if they get a negative result, they know they're good to go. And in the very rare, rare occasions you have a positive one, they have a choice to eat that meat or not. But typically, they're choosing not to. I, I wouldn't. <laughs> I'm... Yeah, if it, yeah, I mean, I, I, even if it's possibly infected, do you want to? No, you don't want that. Yeah, you, you want no part of it. Um, so, um, you you want you want good clean deer meat. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, it's a scary thing if it can be transferred to humans just from eating the 
to me. Well, right. Well, you know, just like Mad Cow can, can certainly. Yeah. Can certainly yeah. I mean. Screw you up bad. So. Wow. Let's see here. That was it on that story. Uh, here's another one that I thought was interesting. <coughs> Walmart sues Tesla for utter incompetence after solar, solar panels burst into <laughs> yeah. flames on top of seven stores. Right. Oh, did you do a story on that? No, no, no. We were going, Walmart and Amazon's also joining in on that. Okay. Yeah. So this is from August 21st, 21st, 2019. Walmart has sued Tesla, accusing it of widespread negligence that led to repeated fires of its solar systems and asking a court to force Tesla to remove solar panels from more than 240 of its stores across the country. It says solar energy systems installed and maintained by the electric car maker were responsible for fires at several locations with dozens showing hazardous problems such as loose wiring and hot spots on panels. Right. According to court papers. So uh, they did, they, Tesla did not immediately, res immediately respond to requests for comment from Daily Mail. Oh, imagine but that. it's uh, this is not a good thing, people. Moose is louder than I am. <laughs> I'm Let me see here. Oh, great. Oh, check, great. Check, check. This is awesome. No, you should be about the same, at least on my this level. This is freaking here. awesome. Just wonderful. All right. Where's, where's that link at? Right. I just posted it. Oh, hit enter. Here. I'm looking at my level here, uh, Woodman, and, and Moose looks like about the same, but I can adjust her down some. Um, that's not a problem. She is loud. <laughs> oh, oh, I see the wire got reset up there. Okay. Let's... I don't fucking know. Oh. You know, every fucking week it's it's. Well, it's I get well, that. Well, we get whatever. that complaint every fucking week, so I don't know what the fuck. You know. Well, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know. You know, you know. <laughs> you know, I mean, just in normal talking, I, I think you're just normally louder than I am. Um, Cause, right well, now you're talking pretty loud. I, I think I am. I think I'm talking normal. All right. Well, anyway, um, let's uh, play some more music. Okay. And then we'll come back and see if we can level out our levels. All righty. <laughs> Sounds good. All righty then. Woodman, how the hell you doing, party? All right. Um, <laughs> this is a band called... Uh, Rena Del Cid. Rena Del Cid. And they're doing a track here called Ain't Nobody Gonna Miss Me When I'm Gone. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, some nice stuff right there, let me tell you. Tracy Chapman and Eric Clapton doing Give Me One Reason back in 1999. Yeah, I like that stuff. Before that, Bob Marley and uh, the Whalers doing Stirred Up at the Old Gray, gray Whistle uh, back in 1973. And kicked it off there with uh, Reyna Del Cid doing a track called Ain't Nobody Gonna Miss Me When I'm Gone. Let's hope they don't. <laughs> Right? Yeah, you know, you know, no, ain't no reason for that. No, uh, no, 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 no cause to be missing folk. Right. You know, you had what you had, and now they're gone. Yep. <laughs> That's how we all go sometimes. Yeah, yeah. So. Um. Let's see what else I got here. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's see here. <clears throat> uh, let's just see if this is any good. Okay. Wait, what you got? What you got? What you got? Okay, this is boring. I'm not going to do that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got a good one. I got a good one lined up here. Okay, you got one. Go for it. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, uh, give me, we'll, give me one second. Here. Um, <laughs> I'm still, I'm still lining up the next set, but uh, yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We'll throw that one in there too, because you know I love her too. So I'll put her in there, and 
Oh yeah, that's good stuff. <laughs> you got? You got one? Yeah, I do. Hang on. <laughs> okay, well, I got one. All right, so um, here you go. From RT.com, uh, posted yesterday. Okay. Totally not suspicious. DARPA freaks people out with urgent request for underground complex. <laughs> All right. <laughs> says, DARPA has prompted panic and mockery for its bizarre Twitter shout-out, urgently seeking complex urban tunnel systems for an unspecified research and experimentation at very short notice. Attention, city dwellers, we're interested in identifying university-owned or commercially, commercially managed underground urban tunnels and facilities able to host research and experimentation. The Defense Advanced Research Project Agency tweeted on Wednesday, sparking a wave of a wave of alarming series ranging from zombie and alien invasions to psyops and the end of the world. <laughs> so, <laughs> then they, they put some pictures there with it. To, it says, why did you pick the creepiest possible images to attach to this tweet? Uh, <laughs> and some, somebody else uh, responded on the Twitter there, uh, anti-faintly. Uh, Attention, humans of Earth, we who are totally also humans of Earth and not at all from another galaxy are looking for tunnels and facilities that will in no way be used for research and experimentation related to determining human flesh. <laughs> no way. In, in no way be used for research and experimentation related to turning human flesh into a power source. Um, <laughs> DARPA's ideal space apparently is a human-made underground environment spanning several city blocks with complex layouts, multiple stories, tunnels, and stairwells, and it's hoping to find just such a subterranean site by today. Social media users were quick to wonder what the Department of Defense could possibly want with a sprawling urban tunnel system with such short notice, with many say saying sounded... Totally not suspicious and definitely ominous. Um, and some guy tweets, um, something going to happen that maybe we might want to know about? Uh, <laughs> yeah, what's going on? Uh, DARPA dismissed one person's theory that they want to store monsters down there by responding <laughs> with a reference to the sci-fi sci Netflix show, Stranger Things. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, please, Demogorgons, uh, are, are such a Department of Energy thing. Uh, many were amused that DARPA would even make such a request on social media. Right. Uh, others offered up their own basements, and uh, some speculated that the tweets themselves were some sort of experiment. Yeah. Pointing out that the U.S. government is likely already well aware of the country's underground structures. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. DARPA is the U.S. Department of Defense arm responsible for developing or development right. of emerging military technologies and has a long history of coming up with crazy and terrifying ideas. Yes. So uh, what that. the fuck are they up to? What, 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 what are these boys up to? Well, you don't, yeah, what, what, you don't want to know. What, what's their you deal? Do, you, <laughs> you do, but you don't. Uh, so yeah, um, beware the DARPAs. Yes, they, they they mean you no good. <laughs> no, they do not. All right, so you have another one there. Let's see here. Oh, yes. Bill right. of the month. Like bill, medical bill, like you know. Right. Okay. Bill you have to pay. All right. All right. E April twenty ninth, twenty nineteen. It's from NPR. Yeah. Don't don't give me the slack about the slack. Okay. All right. Anyway, summer bummer. A summer young camper's one hundred forty-two thousand nine hundred thirty-eight dollar snake bite. Okay. Uh, what nine hundred thirty-eight dollar snake bite? No, one hundred and forty-two. $1,938. Okay. For treatment for a snake bite. Okay. So, anyway, it says, um, 
It was at dusk that Oakley, Yoder, and her other and the other summer camp kids as the, it was dusk as Oakley, Yoder, and the other summer camper kids hiked back to their tents at Illinois' Jackson Falls last July. As the group approached a mound of boulders blocking the path, Oakley didn't not then nine didn't see the lurking snake until it bit a toe on her right foot. I was really scared, Oakley said. I thought I could either get paralyzed or could actually die. Her camp counselors suspected it was a copperhead and knew they needed to get her medical attention as soon as they could. They had to keep her as calm and motionless as possible. The venom venom could circulate more quickly if her heart raced from activity or fear. So they gave her a piggy ride back to the van. First responders met them. Transport her. Um, they gave her a wait, 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 air ambulance. Wait. They gave her a piggy ride. Piggyback ride. Yeah. See, oh, I piggy, thought that was strange because okay. that's gonna like juggle her around and stuff. You would think, yeah. You know, they should just had her walking. Well, she got bit in the toe though. Okay. So they probably didn't want her putting any pressure on her foot. So anyway, the uh, they they. Recommended air ambulance, so they called the helicopter flight, and transferred 80 miles from a school parking lot uh, just outside of outside the forest to St. Vincent Evans Evansville Hospital, Indiana, okay. where she received four vials of anti venom. She was then transferred to Riley Hospital for Children in Indianapolis, Indianapolis for observation. Her parents were already in bed when they got the call. Blah blah blah. They jumped in the car, got to her two hours later. It was a major comfort to, for me to realize, okay, we're getting the best care possible, said the dad. Um, uh, at less than 24 hours after the bite, she left the hospital with her grateful parents. Well, then they got a bill for $142,938. But you got to take into consideration, 55000 of that was the, the, the air ambulance transport, which is absolutely hideous, dude. I mean, they have these, these airlifts, and they're they're beneficial. Don't get me wrong, right? Right. But if it costs people that much money, you're screwed. If you don't have insurance and you get taken somewhere by an air, air ambulance, yeah. you're going to owe that, that money. That's ridiculous. Fifty-five thousand dollars for a flight. That is ridiculous, dude. That's insane. What do you mean, treat her right away? I don't know what you mean by that, dude. But anyway, um, let's see. Uh, da, da, da. Anyway, the essential part of her treatment involved getting her, giving her four vials of snake anti venom, which that's just not everybody just so has. So she, she she got bit you on her have toe. It on hand. She got she got bit on her toe, right? Yes. So somebody could have just sucked her toe. And it says, right. <laughs> Probably. How nasty I mean, that's, that. That's what you're supposed to do if you're out in the wild wilderness and you right. have no way to get anywhere. Yeah, suck the poison right out of there. Right. Suck it out, spit it out. Just so anyway, a... um, it says, when bitten, bitten by a venomous snake, there's no time to waste. If left untreated, a venomous bite can cause tissue damage, hemorrhaging, and respiratory arrest. Children, children tend to experience more severe effects because of their small size. Uh, let's see. Crofab has dominated the U.S. market for snake antivenin since its approval in 2000. When Oakley <laughs> was bitten, it was the only drug available to treat venomous bites from pit vipers. Oakley probably was bitten by a copperhead, a type of pit viper. Anyway, but with the only only one antivenin available in the U.S. at the time, the drug maker, London-based BTG PLC, essentially had a monopoly. The average list price for Crofab is... Three thousand one hundred ninety-eight dollars per vial. So four of those she needed, and there's three thirty-two hundred dollars a piece. Wow. Yeah. So um. Yeah. Really? That's, that's pretty crazy. Yeah. That's pretty damn crazy. I mean, just imagine someone driving, and they get in a wreck or something. And they don't have insurance or anything. But well, they even need, even the that, first I, 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 I determined that you need to get to the hospital right now. So you got to ride on this helicopter, right? You know, and you you're knocked out. You you're not making the decision, but they're going to give you a ride on a helicopter, and then you're going to come out of your deal, hopefully, 
and you're okay. going to have a $55,000 bill. Right. What the fuck? Crazy. How, how is that a service to the people, to uh, the public? That's a good question. It is not a service. If you're going to cost charge somebody that much money for, uh, you know, a 20-minute tw freaking ride? I yeah. mean, seriously, you know. Uh, it, yeah. Uh, e either way, even, even if you take that 55 k away, it's still like $90,000. For a snake bite treatment. Yeah. That's, uh, that is ridiculous. That's insane. Yeah. I mean, even riding in an ambulance is expensive. Well, that's sure. like ten grand or fifteen grand now. Yeah, which is nuts, yeah. What the fuck? I thought this was supposed to be like the public a public service like doctors are supposed to what's that Hippocratic oath or whatever the fuck? D do no harm. Right. I I'm sorry, but you're doing financial harm to people if you're making them pay this outrageous money to ride in an ambulance or in a helicopter because you're trying to save their life. Right. I'm sorry, but that's not that doesn't make any fucking sense. Yeah, I'll tell you what. It's not, it's not, people out there with no insurance. You know, they're assuming that people have insurance, see? Right. You know? Well, I'll tell you what. If 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 I come down with some kind of a malady, an ailment, that's going to cost over a hundred grand, just just let me go. Yeah, well, that's what <laughs> Mr. Brown just said. Just let me die. Yeah, you know? just, that's it, man. It's, I mean... Enough's enough. <laughs> right. I mean, it's like... Let me, did I post that? Oh, yeah. yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. And I mean, but I saw this, and I mean, I know that hospital costs and these kind of costs are out of control, like off the charts, right? Yeah. But this is ridiculous. Yep. For a snake bite, like you said, Grim, they would have been better off if those camp counselors were to suck their fucking toe, get the venom out of there as fast as possible, instead of giving her a piggyback ride. You <laughs> fucking make, having to ride in a fucking helicopter. Yeah, it's nuts. You know, I mean... She would, they wouldn't owe this money. Right. Ab absolutely. Chris Gara points out that uh, uh, the American medical system is massively bloated because of the insurance yes. industry driving up prices. Yes. And they do that specifically because the government not only allows it, but demands it. Uh, so you get government out of medicine completely, and, and you'll be 900% right. right. better That's off. Right, that's the problem. Government makes it worse. Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, they, yeah. Totally, yeah. totally. Yeah, like everything. But, yeah. I mean... When when I had my kids, I had twins. I had to have a C section. Right. It was fifty. It was six thousand dollars, and that was two thousand. That was uh, nineteen over nineteen years ago. Right. Yep. No, it was like fifty five hundred. I think. Yeah, fifty five hundred. And that you know, so Koshura is saying. Seven hundred, three hundred. That was a that was a deal back. Then. Well, maybe not back then because you know inflation and you know what I mean. Right. I hate that argument. Well, you know these older people they they talk about the old days when gas was cheap and newspaper was you know everything was cheap. You know. Yeah. But times were different then. You can't really compare. You know how so they have to do like analysis to see well what does that kind of money compare to today. Thanks, Meister Braff, for the sound check. You know Appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Thanks, thanks, Mr. Ralph. Thanks for your uh, your heads up on that. Yeah. Um. So anyway, um. You know what I mean? You can't go well back in the day. You could buy a house for twelve thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars. You know what I mean? <laughs> but what would that be now? If you do all that, you know what I mean? No, we don't but need I government do at all. Know, just Gira. What? Um, when? I'm, I'm telling Gira, just Gira, You know, we don't need government at all. <laughs> right. They certainly, I mean, used to, yeah, right. <laughs> they certainly don't make things accountable. I mean, take for example the vaccine industry. Right. And they've made it so you cannot sue the vaccine industry for right. damages caused to you. So, how, where's the accountability in uh, that? Exactly. Uh, there, that's, uh, the, it takes the, the accountability right out of the picture. The the, the, uh, the government protects the the people that run them, and yes. a lot of those people are big pharma. Uh, yep. Just like with with the uh, with uh, the um, environment, uh, th those are run by a lot of the, the big environmental destroyers. So, yeah. Anyway, anyway. Right. So, um, and besides, I'm an anarchist, you know. So, uh, you can't really try and hook me into that. 
<laughs> then I, then Times I already, were a little bit different as far as yeah, certain things. Like, we didn't have cell phones. We didn't have fucking computers and Internet and stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, I mean, times were different as far as pay and the, the money situation, the economic situation. Like, I mean, it seemed like back in the day when people were paid appropriately for the work they did. Now people are underpaid big time, dude. And sure. the problem is, is the cost of everything goes up and the people the people get paid doesn't keep up with that, that cost increase of for, for items or whatever. You know what I mean? Exactly. Toilet paper. Right, right. You know, right. Toilet paper keeps going up, but your wages don't go up as fast as that. Not no. even close. Yeah, everything. No. Uh, yeah, I was at the uh, I was at the grocery store last night there, and uh, the thing I, I noticed most right off because I've been buying this for ten years or something is peanut oil. Yeah. Yep. I, I buy peanut oil by the gallon. Right. Yeah, that's a good oil. Okay. Yeah. And and when I started buying this about ten years ago, it was like eight bucks a gallon. It's almost fifteen dollars a gallon now. Oh my God! That's <laughs> yeah. that's a seven dollar. Yeah, it's it's almost double. It's almost double in ten years. Oh and, my God! And so it, it's crazy, you know. It's crazy, but uh, yeah, I can't uh, believe and, it. Know, sometimes when I go to the grocery store, and I'm like, really? And, and of course, the price of everything has gone way up. But um, right. yeah, that that was the most noticeable to me, just because of uh, wow. I've been tracking and monitoring. You know, it went up to like nine dollars, eleven dollars, and now it's like, uh, uh, pff, woof. So maybe it's getting more popular. I, I don't know, but uh, I, I think not. I, <laughs> and I'd, I'd like to be able to blame it on uh, Trump's tariffs, but I know that most of it's made right here in the good old U.S. of A. Uh, so that can't be done. <laughs> right. You know. All right. Anyway, um, so you know the the uh, war on drugs, the wonderful war on yeah, drugs quote unquote. that exists out there. Yeah, and I'm sure that these guys, when they when they found what they found, were celebrating and hooping and hollering, "Woohoo! Look, we got a good one here." Too bad, so sad for them. <laughs> from, from the Guardian, <laughs> huge drug bust at Gatwick, which is over there in London or Ireland, yep. I think. Uh, whatever. Uh, uh, turns out to be vegan cake mix. <laughs> Yep. Says officers left with egg substitute on their face after after discovery of 25 bags of white powder. <laughs> the huge drug bust at Gatwick Airport has turned out to be a part of a cake. Uh, the members from the staff <laughs> at Puriza Vegan Pizzeria were transporting the ingredients in a suitcase when they were stopped by police. The white powder, which was divided into blue bags, was tested before officers accepted it was legal. Uh, <laughs> British Transport Police said officers were called to Gatwick Airport Station on uh, the 28th of August after a suitcase was found containing 25 bags of powder. Ooh, powder. <laughs> Following a number of inquiries and tests, it was determined the bags of powder were cake ingredients for a vegan bakery. Oh, uh, my God. They, they were soon reunited with their owner, who has promised officers and staff a slice of the cake in return. Why Why reward these guys for being these asshats? But, eh, whatever, people have this love of, of pigs. And the, the restaurant, which has stores in Brighton and London, tweeted, Thanks for going easy on us, guys. They, they're dicking with you for nothing, and you're going to give them cake. A slab of cake all around. Uh. <laughs> uh, nonsense. <laughs> anyway. Big time. God. So that, yeah, that's it. The, 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 uh, the cop love goes deep uh, in, in this world. Yeah, for whatever. Now, this could apply to you, me. Okay. Many of our many of our um, uh, people here at, at Real Liberty Media, because I would be sure, pretty sure, that most of us, when we were younger, had somewhat of a rebellious streak. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. From the Daily Mail. Imagine okay. that. Imagine that. Rebellious kids who drink and smoke grow grow up to be kinder adults. 
Nice. Yeah. So researchers in the U.S. and Netherlands surveyed over 200 children, which is a pretty small sampling. Uh, and uh, three, 200 children, three, and adolescents, and three times over the course uh -huh. of six years. They also took MRIs of the participants' brains, brain regions responsible for both risky behavior and empathy, and pro-social behavior are developing rapidly in adolescents. Those who took more risks wanted to play and were more rebellious by doing things like drinking and smoking and tended to be more willing to help others. So, um, yeah, if if you were a, a little rebel rebel, your face is a mess, uh, then, <laughs> <laughs> then there's a good chance that you grew up to be a pretty good person, you know? Um, yeah, you are a people. We're all a people. Uh, anyway, so... Um, uh, I, I, I mean, I would, I would just normally assume it was, it was true. It says as if they'd set out to scientifically prove the Breakfast Club true. Three social scientists said their work was a reminder not to pigeonhole people, especially teenagers, into negative stereotypes. While their study was survey based, the research team also notes the link between socially positive and risky behaviors may be tied to a region of the brain that manages both type of impulses. So encourage your kids to be little rebels if you need to. You shouldn't have to actually need to. Uh, the Breakfast Club, that was an interesting film. I enjoyed that film. Um, you remember that film? Moose Girl, Moose Girl? Which one? Breakfast Club? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah so, hell yeah. Yeah, it was a good film, man. It's, uh, yeah, it was. I liked it. It was good. It was. It was a what, John? Yeah, I forget the guy's name offhand too, but John. John. John he did all those films like Sixteen yeah, Candles. Yeah. And, John. Ooh, what was his last name? I don't know. Some. Common I can't name. remember either. Yeah, but some... I just want to pass along. Are you done? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, I just want to pass along real quick that Valerie Harper has passed away. Oh. That's yeah. Uh, that's uh, the lady that played Rhoda. Rhoda. On Mary Time More Show, after a battle of cancer, she was eighty, um, and I guess she had been struggling with it for a little bit. But uh, <laughs> she was a funny lady. She was a great actress. I really, I really liked her as an actress and stuff. But um, so R.I.P. Lady. <laughs> That's a good one there, Tuscara. <laughs> Religious children are less able to distinguish fantasy from reality. Yeah. Yeah, no yeah, doubt. No true. doubt. <laughs> That's right. true. I would say that is very true. All right, we're going to play some more jams right here. All right, let's do that. And, we'll be back. Uh, we're we'll talk about some more stuff. Kick it off with that crazy fish woman. Ooh, mm, I like yeah, this lady. She, yeah. is, she is she is the shit, dude. She, she is, is something else. She's, she's no doubt good stuff. about it. So uh, this is her with uh, Danny Wilde. It's an older uh, video. Uh, enjoy. The song is called Runaway. Thank you guys so much. You're welcome. She's so awesome. <laughs> Beth Hart. Beth Hart there. Yes, indeed. Uh, got, got to love her. Um, uh, just just amazing stuff. That's a brand new one for her, by the way. It's called Bad Woman Blues, in case you weren't able to pick that up from the actual track there. Uh, that video was just released on the 29th, which was yesterday. Uh, but the new album, uh, War In My Mind, Beth Hart's new album, War in My Mind will come out September 27th, so uh, keep an eye out for that, because dang, he's good stuff. Before that, a Musco request there, the Reverend Horton Heat doing a track called a Perfect, and we kicked it off with Samantha Fish, uh, the lovely Samantha Fish, from, oh, I don't know how long ago, when was that, uh, 2016, this is the video came out. I think the track's a little older than that, anyway, it's called Runaway. Uh, she was up there on stage with some of her old cohorts from the uh, Blues Girls uh, concerts, uh, Victoria Smith and uh, Danny Wild. So uh, yeah, good stuff, man. I tell you, I love that. I love that rock and blues style women. Good stuff. Oh yeah, you bet. <laughs> oh man, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. What? What? 
What? what, what? Uh, I'm just talking to myself. Oh, okay. Anyway. You, you do that. Um, this is another one that I saved, and I knew this before this article. I knew this. Anyway, this is from May 14, 2019. Okay. From intelligentliving.co. Okay. Uh, dogs can sniff out cancer in blood with nearly 97% accuracy, study shows. Yep. They got good blood sniffers. Blood dogs may become the latest frontier in cancer detection, a newly presented study, a new study presented at the American Society for Biochemistry and Molecular Biology annual meeting to the 2019 Experimental Biology Conference in Orlando, Florida. What were you saying, Graham? I said, yeah, they got good sniffers. They do. Like, way more important than than humans. Way, way, way stronger sense of smell than humans have. Sure, sure. Yeah. And so anyway, um, it says, by using their superb sense of smell, which is 10,000 times, did you hear me? 10,000 times. <laughs> yeah. More accurate than a human's. Therefore, making them highly sensitive to orders we can't perceive. The trained lab dogs were able to pick up blood samples from cancer patients with 97% accuracy. Did we even need another reason to call dog, call dogs man's best friend? Anyway, um, the researcher says that it's very exciting because it proves the, paves the way for first, further research along two paths, both of which could lead to new cancer detection tools. One is using canine scent detection as a screening method. The other would be determine the biological compounds the dogs detect and then good design dog. cancer screening tests based on that. Yeah, yeah, good doggies. Yeah, but anyway, that's kind of, I mean, I pretty much knew this, though, before this article. Right. Um, it's been for other people, there's been other stories out there where the dog can tell someone's sick. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. They're really perceptive that way, and they use other tools, not just their eyes and their hearing. They use their their noses. Sure. That's how they know a person is from from your scent. They don't know you. They know you from your scent because they can smell you coming before you are, are are there. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. I mean, if their noses are ten thousand times more powerful than a human's. <laughs> I mean, I'm kind of glad that our noses aren't as, as good as a dog's nose. Yeah, that could be annoying. Yeah, I don't really want to smell bad shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But that's how dogs read each other. That's how a dog knows another dog. That's how a dog can tell if it's a, dog, a male or a female. Yeah. By the scent. Right, And right. then, oh, speaking of this, I am getting my dog, my dog Jackson, he's almost a year old now, and he's starting to do resource guarding, which he likes to chew certain things. Like, he likes socks, okay? Well, if he picks a sock, I mean, he has his own socks that we let him chew on, which this was a bad on our part. Right. So he thinks that he can chew on any sock, right? Okay. So, if he picks out a sock that is like my sock, or you know, for instance. Or a sock puppet. And he, he's, he's chewing on it. He thinks that's his sock now. Well, so if pretty you try much... to go near him to try to take that away from him, he is, he starts showing aggression now. Yeah. So he's doing what's called resource guarding, apparently. Okay. And I looked it up online. I'm like, you know, I looked up aggressive dog behavior, what to do, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so they, they did, the main thing to do is to get the dog neutered. Okay? Yeah. Because... That's what he's—he's he's almost an adult now, and he's—he's he's intact. He—he he still has his balls, right? Right, right. And I mean, they say that they can smell a female in heat for miles away. Yeah. And if they can smell that, they're not going to be easy to control or whatever. You know what I mean? Sure. And so this is what's caught. This is why he's being this way too. This is part of it. Yeah. yeah. The, the aggression. So, oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and so, like, I know the other day we were walking, like, after I read the article, we were going on our walk, and there was a lady across the street walking her little dog. It was like a Boston Terrier or something. I don't know. Right. It had to have been a female. It had to have been, because Jackson was wanted to be over there by that fucking dog. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm like, oh, there you go. Yeah. I'm like, I bet you that dog's a female. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So... I'm going. I mean, I see, the Eau Claire vets want like five hundred and fifty dollars, right? 
I'm wow. like, no fucking way am I paying that much. To have my... Because, for one thing, the, the neutering is a less invasive procedure than a female dog getting spayed. I can only imagine, it's probably for a female dog, they probably want a, a grand. Probably. You know, because it's way more intensive of a surgery, you know? Sure, sure. So anyway, I'm like, no way am I paying that much money, you know? Fuck yeah, that. right. So I call out to this place at Lake Lasota, and it's 240 bucks. Mm-hmm. Which better. is like three hundred dollars less, or three hundred and fifty dollars less than what Eau Claire wants. Yeah, it's like yeah, I'll drive <laughs> the extra, extra, you know, miles to go as long as I can. <laughs> no, that is not the answer to everything. But when when it's a dog, and you're the owner, and you have to be the alpha because you have to be able to control your dog. Like, I have to be able to control that dog. I have to be able to make sure that he listens nah, to you me. No, you know, it, it, I tell you. It's, freaking want to be taken off all the time. But I have to be the alpha here. And I'm not going to breed him out. So, so you and know. Then, obviously, that's not the answer. That's not what I would want for a male. Unless you're a fucking pedophile or a rapist or something. I would, If you were a rapist or a pedophile, I would have no problem with castration. I would not. Because you can't rehab those people. So, you know, but, yeah, you know, I know it's, it's, every dog's different, but, you know, I'm not going to breed him, and I need to be able to control him, and whatever, you know. Yeah, you know, I think, I think it's actually, uh, I think it's kinder to a male dog if you're never going to let him, you know, breed. Right, Uh, because otherwise you'd just be constantly anxious, like, you know, it, 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 it sounds horrible, and I and and I, I never you know did that to my Rottweiler, um, although I probably should have. But uh, I I just couldn't say I, I could. I mean, I'm a man. <laughs> right, right. And, and I couldn't. No, I'm not gonna have his balls chopped off. What the hell? <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but it, it is probably a kinder way to go. Uh, so so they don't have that 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 drive. That to, constant drive to, to, to always do it. Yeah, See, so. the other part of it is you're not supposed to bring your dog to the dog park if they're not if they're not fixed. Because, oh, well. you know, I, I, there, seriously, I do not want other, some fucking other dog owner to get pissed at me because my fucking Jack Russell got their female pregnant. You know, you know? There, there's plenty of places to I take your dog. <laughs> there's plenty of places to take your dog except for a public dog park. Exactly. If that's Which your I concern. Have other places. Yeah, so if that's your concern, then just don't go to the dog park. That's not my only concern. Yeah, so. My my main concern right now is the aggression. So that's, if if that's good, I mean, that's not the only answer for it. Like, if if it continues after that, then I have to obviously do training and, you know. Well, and you probably probably should do the training anyway. Well, yeah, I mean, but I, I, you know, I couldn't do it. I couldn't afford it. So that's how it went. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, could you do it? Yes, I, I'm just, I could do it myself without the fucking class. Yes, you can. You know, but what I would like to do eventually is to get him on, like, we have, like, certain places here that have dog agility courses, so that's what I'm going to do with him. Yeah, no, that, that's good. I, I mean, you know, I, I'm not personally in, in favor of the whole snip thing, but... I can see how it how it how it would work out for you. So yeah. Now, now was Marty Marty was snipped? Yeah. Oh yeah. If you adopt a, an animal from Humane Society, they you have to get them fixed. Yeah. You don't have a choice. So. Yeah. Well, you have to get the dogs or cats fixed if you adopt from Humane Society. Right. Right. So. All right. Anyway. Well, let's uh, let's. Uh, I mean, I, I got a public service announcement for folks out there. Right. Now I don't know if anybody uses glass uh, cooktops, and, and if I so, do. and if so, if you've purchased them in the last three, four years. No. Okay, but if you have, I came across this article: CBSAustin.com. Glass cooktops may turn on by themselves. So, uh, yeah, so uh, it says some Whirlpool, KitchenAid, and Gen Air brand glass cooktops can be a fire hazard. A recall noticed by the uh, Consumer Product Safety Commission 
uh, said certain models can turn on by themselves. Uh, the recall applied to about uh, 26,300 stoves in the U.S., along with 1,928 sold in Canada and Mexico. Uh, owners can find the model number. It lists all the model numbers here that are affected. Numbers starting with a K are KitchenAid models, W, Whirlpool, J, Jenner. Uh, so if you have one of these, it says owners can find the, the models, tell you where to find the model numbers, and uh, it shows you the model numbers. Owners may contact Whirlpool at this phone number for a replacement. Now, my question is here, who's going to pay? Who's going to pay for that? Who's going to pay for that replacement? I mean, sure, you're going to get a, a, a replacement cooktop, but who's going to install that for you? Because most people don't know how to install one of these cooktops on their own, and that's that's probably cost more than the freaking cooktop. So, um, are, are you just screwing people over on that end? It doesn't say here in the article. Uh, but uh, either way, if you have one of these, um, definitely want to get it replaced because... Uh, uh, you know, you just don't want those coming on. You know, sometimes people leave stuff on the on the glass cooktops there, um, and so probably avoid that to begin with. But um, <laughs> anyway, so uh, yeah, so uh, if you if you got one of these and it's a recent model, uh, like I said, the last four years or so, um, check it out, get it replaced. You probably got a I don't know, maybe you, you get a recall notice from the company. Uh, but uh, that sounds highly dangerous uh, to me. <laughs> Most still there? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, you know, it's each to their own. I mean, um, I know that it's not going to, it's not like having a cat's, a cat declawed. It's not as bad as that. Oh, well, but no, but... A female dog, it's different because it's the other side of the equation. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. Like, if you don't want your dog to have a bunch of litters, then you get a, get the female dog spayed. Okay, so, um, have you heard... Just a joke. What? Have you... Have... <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I... Anyway, uh, have you heard about these chicken sandwiches at Popeye's restaurant? No. Okay, well, apparently they're a huge thing. There's a, apparently a new type of chicken sandwich at the Popeye's restaurant. I saw this big thing on Twitter last week or the week before, people comparing all the chicken sandwiches. Oh, this one's the best, this one's the best. And it was like this big run on chicken sandwiches, right? Yeah. Well, apparently Popeye's ran out of chicken sandwiches. <laughs> they, they, couldn't, they couldn't supply... What? Aren't they... Don't they specialize in that? Uh, whatever. Uh, I've never, I've know. never actually <laughs> been to a Popeyes, but I haven't either. Actually, um, I've never been to one. And, and, but, but apparently, they, 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 this, this was such a huge seller that they could not keep up with supply, <laughs> and they ran out of chicken sandwiches. Wow. So you go down to Popeyes, and they don't have your chicken sandwich. What would you do? Uh, order something else, or leave and go somewhere else. All right. Well, that's what I would do too. But this guy. Decided he's going to sue Popeye's for running out of chicken sandwiches. Oh, really? I'll go look with that, buddy. It says... It's like a more says, powerful two reason you could ever afford. A, a man said he suffered emotional damage while trying to track down the new Popeye's chicken sandwich. Now he's suing the restaurant chain for $5,000. Craig Barr of Chattanooga, Tennessee said he filed a civil lawsuit accusing Popeyes of false advertising and deceptive business practices. He said he went to several locations last week and all of them were sold out of the wildly popular <laughs> sandwich. Oh, no. Oh, no. What a crisis. Oh, dude, I had to have this sandwich today or I was, I'm was i going to freaking lose my shit, dude. Countless time wasted driving to and from Popeyes. <laughs> oh, my God. No chicken really? sandwich was told to come back this day. Still no sandwich, the lawsuit states. Uh, Barr claims he also suffered rim and tire damage while driving from location to location. I don't know how that's Popeye's fault. Oh, my God, that's uh, a stretch there. I, I don't know how that's Popeye's fault, but he said right, he, was, he was humiliated when his friends laughed at him. Well, oh, I no. would laugh at you, too. In fact, I'm laughing at you right now, you dark. Right. <laughs> 
He said he was so desperate to try the new <laughs> menu item that he responded to a Craigslist ad posted by someone who oh, claimed to work at Popeye's and could sell him the sandwich for twenty-five dollars. What? Bar, Bar Bar claims he paid the person, but never. Yeah, he went over to Wendy's and got one of their chicken sandwiches. He paid the person, but never got his sandwich. The Craigslist ad is no longer oh online. Um, <laughs> Bar claims he. Oh, where where I lost? Okay, I can't get happy. I have this sandwich on my mind. I can't think straight. Bar told the Times Free Press, <laughs> "It just consumes you." Well, it consumes you, buddy. But you're, there's something wrong with your brain. Yeah, oh shit. Uh, Popeyes has not released a statement responding to the lawsuit. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm laughing at you, buddy. Oh, the embarrassment, the shame. Oh, poor thing. And he damaged his rims and tires. Oh no! What the hell? Watch where you're going. Um, right. <laughs> what a dork. No doubt. I can't get my sandwich. Oh, well, God. call an ambulance. Okay. This I found interesting, and, and uh, for you um, vaccine aficionados out there, people that love, uh, well, it's not necessarily a vaccine, but well, we don't love whatever, uh, big, <laughs> big, big, big pharma fans out there, I guess. Right. Uh, maybe you have a kid, and you go to the doctor, and the doctor yep. gives your kid certain drugs, certain shots. Yep. From ArsTechnica.com. Hairy werewolf syndrome in babies and kids caused what? by drug mix-up. Oh, my God. <laughs> Ch children accidentally given hair loss drug minoxidil. And, oh, my and, God. And How do you screw that up? Instead of acid reflux, Ned. Oh, uh, my God. So it says at least 17 babies and children in Spain began growing hair all over their faces and bodies after they were accidentally given the hair loss drug minoxidil which a Spanish pharmaceutical company had mislabeled uh, as a medication to treat acid reflux. Oh, my uh, God. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> the error led to... Can you imagine if you, you all of a sudden you wake up the next day and your baby's got, like, hair on its face and shit? <laughs> well, if it was growling, that would be especially problematic. Right. I mean, oh, my God. <laughs> and the error led to children to develop a form of the rare condition... Hypertrichosis, right. a.k.a. werewolf syndrome. Yes. One, oh, one mother God. told Spanish news outlet El Pai uh, how the drug affected her baby boy, who was just six months old, when he began growing excess hair. My son's forehead, cheek, arms, legs... Had uh, and hands became covered in hair. He, oh my he, God! He had, I would yeah. be freaking out. I, I would seriously, <laughs> if I was that mother, I would have been like, "Oh my God, my kid's a fucking werewolf." <laughs> he had the eyebrows of an adult. He was very <laughs> scary because we didn't, we didn't know what was happening I'm to sure. him. Another mother, whose three-month-old was affected, told the outlet oh of the anguish of going from one doctor to another, trying to figure out what was happening. Right. So, somewhere, oh my God. Can somewhere, you uh, they were initially told oh, it, could, a werewolf. it could be a genetic condition or a oh metabolic disorder. Even the doctors had no clue what the hell was going on. Uh, so, <laughs> meanwhile, oh investigators God. at the Spanish Agency of Medicines and Medical Devices tracked the problem to a factory run by the pharmaceutical company Pharma Quimica, uh, in somewhere in southern Spain. Investig wow. Investigators had homed in on syrups for acid reflux that were prepared as a compound drug, that is, drugs that are formulated on an individual basis by pharmacists. The syrups were supposed to include the drug omeprazole, a drug common to treat acid reflux. But according to investigators, it appeared when Pharmaquimarca uh, distributed batches that was labeled as omeprazole, they were actually distributing minoxidil a.k.a. Rogaine, which is used to treat hair loss as well as hypertension. Uh, investigators added that it wasn't an issue of impurity or that the drugs are mixed together, just the labeling error that caused your little kids to turn into werewolves. <laughs> now, yeah, uh, there, when, the, Matt, when my kids were born, it's, it's common for there to be downy hair 
on the baby, but <laughs> not like the werewolf syndrome. No, yeah, that's yeah. where it's 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 a lot, and it's yeah, it's way different. Uh, I mean, the lanugo is very is very it's natural, but what we're talking about here is not the same thing. Yeah, no, it isn't the same thing. Yeah, the, okay, the other right, cool. the, the other day when I when I found this article in the chat, I, I posted or I did a, like yeah. a little definition thing in the chat for hypertrichosis to, mm-hmm. to see what it was, and I told people. I'm going to tell you about this on Friday night. So there you go. I right. told you about it there on Friday go. night. Yep. <laughs> there you go. All right. Hypertrichosis. Werewolf yeah, syndrome. And, Harry yeah. werewolf syndrome. <laughs> it is. It, it's, it, it, and it affects males and females. Oh, yeah. You mean, you, well, your, little, yeah your, daughter, just, your daughters can be werewolves, too. Yeah. It could. <laughs> Oh. Well, anyway, uh, um. Now this, I, wait, before we, since we're talking about hairy critters, yeah, and this is this is actually an old story from like 2004 or something. But somebody okay. posted, somebody posted it the other day, and I, I still find it humorous. Okay. So uh, here on CountryRebel.com, which is apparently a clothing company. Okay. Bear steals 36 beers from campers, gets drunk and passes out until the rangers <laughs> come. <laughs> So according to the uh, Washington Department of Wild Fish and Wildlife, a black bear was found passed out on the lawn of the Swift uh, Swift Creek Campground due to drinking a 36-pack of beers. <laughs> this bear was wasted. 36 beers? <laughs> 36. Wow. Apparently some campers were away from their tents, maybe going on a Holy hike or a swim. Crap. And while they were gone, the backwoods bandit bear snuck into their campsite opened up their cooler full of cold brews. The evidence was discovered after they found the bear passed out with a trail of empty beer cans leading back to the campsite. A total of 36 cans were found with bite marks and bear claw punctures in them. Uh, the bear only has taste for one beer. Schwag. Uh, well, what's even, which I guess, because yeah. that's what the campers had, but whatever. Uh, what's right. even funnier about the situation was the bear was only interested in a sp- specific type of beer called oh. Rainier beer. Yeah, uh, that's from Washington. Yeah, when, when, it, when, invest, when investigating the scene, it was found the bear opened one bu- bush beer and apparently <laughs> did not like it. Oh, be- because it, le- bear. it left the rest of them behind. However, it drank all of the radiator beer. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's funny. <laughs> so uh, yeah, they got pictures here of a bear passed out and such like that. So you can take a look. Kind of, I just found it humorous. Uh, you know, like I said, it's an old story. Um, right. <laughs> but still. That's funny. Good for a chuckle. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. He's all passed out. Just <laughs> thrown out. Just done. Hey, boo boo. <laughs> <laughs> I got some beer over here. <laughs> he's he's like passed out in the tree. Even. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that's that. That could just be a stock photo. That know. could be. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. Mm. That's funny. All right. Well, we got a set here coming up. I'm going to do right now. All right. Cool. Three tracks, the same song, different versions, different people. Oh. Oh. Okay. And we are just going to let it keep rolling. All right. Get on. Everybody on board. On board. What was it? All aboard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Amelda, you little cutie. Ah, she's so good. <laughs> Amelda May there doing her version, or one of her versions anyway, of Train Kept a Rollin'. I was looking actually for her, the version of her doing the Train Kept a Rollin' with Jeff Beck, but I couldn't find it. Uh, at least not a good one. There was, there was one posted up there, but it was a horrible recording. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, I love Imelda May doing Train Kept a Rollin'. Before that, we had the Guitar Army. The, the title of the video only says Jeff Beck, Jimmy Page, Ron Wood, and Metallica. But there were many others up there on that stage. Uh, Joe Perry, Flea, um, <laughs> just all kinds of folks up there singing along and playing along uh, on uh, Train Kept a Rollin' there. And we kicked it off. With Aerosmith and Jimmy Page doing Train Kept a Rolling Down over at Donington back in 1990. 
So uh, there you go. Train kept the roller right. for three, <laughs> three tracks there, man. I love that stuff. <laughs> Next time I have, I want to hear the Billy version. Well, you have to. Uh, all right. <laughs> when you do that. All right, all right. That's fine. Uh-huh. That's cool. That's cool. I mean, because we've seen Jimmy Page play it, tw- play it twice now. Why? Well, I, I know, but, you know. I'm just kidding. I love uh, Jimmy Page. Uh, Jimmy Page is in my top five guitarist. You, you, you really can't go wrong with Jimmy. No, <laughs> you cannot. He's the master. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, he and he looks good for his age. Oh yeah, man. He's, he's, his yeah. hair is all white. And it's a, it's shorter. It's not long anymore. He's a he's a he's a cool old dude. Yeah, he is a cool old dude. He can play guitar like a motherfucker. So anyway, I looked this up because Chosura Chosura is talking about going deer hunting. Right. And he's in Michigan. Right. And this this chronic wasting disease is spreading. I mean, it's we've been I've been we've been hearing probably about it in this part of the country for five years at least, if not longer. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, many many many, yeah. many years. Twenty years. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. I mean, yeah. when was Mad Call thing, Grim? I think it started in the nineties. I'm, I'm pretty the sure. The nineties. Yes, yeah. it was the nineties when that, when that was um going on. Anyway, um, it's 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 they say it's caused by prions, and a, a prion is a term first used to describe the mysterious infectious agent responsible for several neurodegenerative degenerative diseases on mammals, including C, CJD in humans, which is Creutzfeldt Jakob disease. Right. Uh, the word itself derives from proteinaceous infectious particle. Right. It refers to the, this is all really weird, big words here. You know, like words I'm not used to saying. Well, um, it refers to the initially heretical hypothesis that the infection agent causing those diseases consists only of protein with no nucleic acid genome. Anyway, I. I'm just learning about this and just researching this because it, I, I mean, I really leery of eating venison now. You know, not that the, this can affect cows because it has in the past, it's such as mal, mad cow disease. That was over in the UK, though, right, Graham? Yeah. Well, I, yeah. It, well, that's where it started, but yeah. Right. Yeah. But anyway, um, this is. This article will explain to you what exactly a prion is. Does it say what causes them? I, I think uh, it was from eating eating other cows' brains. It says they, prions have long intrigued scientists I, 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 because I, of their unusual properties. I, I think what happened was the the, uh, the the cattle farmer were chopping up like old old parts of old cows. Part of that was their brains into the oh. feed into the feed of the cattle. And those Ooh. cattle eating the other cow's, cattle's brains oh, uh, ca- shit. Caused, caused that prion disease. That was originally, um, I, I do believe how it how it began, because they wow. were trying to make the, the feed as cheap as possible, and, right. and 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 so they had this this meat, which I didn't even know cows ate meat, but uh, I didn't either. Uh, I thought they just eat like grass and but shit. But apparently they'll feed what they'll eat whatever you put in front of them. Oh, okay, um, that's not surprising. <laughs> So uh, yeah, so um, yeah, so what, what, basically, they it was transmitting through the cow population over there because of the tainted meat with the brain with the diseased brain material in it. Right. So yeah, I, I think that was. Uh, well, I'm not positive. It's been a long time since I've uh, uh, read read about that. See you later, Gary L. Thanks for jumping in out here hey, on, Gary. on 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 the freaking ball, man. Thanks for thanks for uh, stopping by for a while. Yeah. Oh, he's so, good to have you here with speaking us. Speaking of this, though, is so I met somebody recently that does a lot of hiking and stuff in the woods. Right. And they have the tick borne problem where they can't eat meat now. Remember we were talking about that yeah. earlier this summer? Yeah, sure, sure. But that one new tick where it normally they're down south. Yeah. But they've made their way up north now. Right. And it makes you allergic, basically, to meat, red meat. It's oh. kind of weird. It is weird, but 
I mean, it's a different kind of tick than what we're used to seeing up here in this part of the country. Uh huh. But it, it, I have actually met somebody now that lives in this part of the country that has that has developed this disorder or whatever. Right. Which is really freaky. I mean, what the hell? Yeah, what the hell? You know, they used to be able to eat meat, and then now when they do, their throat starts to slow up. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's not good. <laughs> no, it's not. So I guess. Those, I mean, it's yeah. I guess wow. those people will be uh, vegetarians from now on. Right. You have to really watch what you eat, and then. Like they said, it's weird because they still want to eat it. <laughs> sure. Well. But they can't. You know, they know they can't, but they want to. Yeah. <laughs> but that's that would suck, really. That, that, that would, would suck. suck. That would suck. Yeah, that that would really fucking suck. Like, is it any meat? Is it like tuna? I mean. Well, yeah, I don't know. It must, no, just red meat. Yeah. Apparently, it's only red meat, but okay, okay. isn't that weird? Like. How did that happen? Like, uh, who knows? Who knows? Who that's knows? a weird thing. Global warming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. right. Oh God. Anyway, um, <laughs> so I, I don't know if you heard, but uh, yesterday or the day before, uh, mm -hmm. Iran was trying to launch a satellite in the space. Okay. No, okay. I, didn't, I didn't hear that. Okay. And then on on the launch pad, their rocket blew up. Oh really? Oh how now, we... now the United States was heavily, heavily against Iran I, doing I, that. Iran right. launching any, any kind of satellites. Oh yeah, of course, because the U.S. is only supposed to be able to do that. Well, the, and, and their their friends, which Iran is right. not one of. So anyway, today over there on the Twitter, <laughs> says Trump wishes Iran good luck in probe. To, into failed rocket launch as he rules out U.S. involvement. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, right. Yeah. Why did they even make a statement? I mean, uh, that right there says they're guilty. Right, right. And, he, and he's just poking fun he, because... He made a statement just so they know we weren't involved. It's like, really, how long? No, no, he, he, he's, poking, he's poking them with a stick, you know. He, he's saying, yeah, for, try and prove it. Try and prove we did it. <laughs> anyway, it says, earlier satellite photos by private Earth imaging companies showed what appeared to be the remain, remnants of a space rocket at the Iranian spaceport following the, following the failed launch. Trump has tweeted Iran his best wishes and good luck in determining what happened to the Iranian space rocket, uh, which was destroyed before liftoff. Uh, his, his actual tweet was, the United States was not involved in the catastrophic... Oh, yeah, of course he's going to say that. Uh, well, he, like I said, he's poking him with a stick saying, yeah, we well, get yeah. it. We get it. You can't prove it, though, because we get it from space somehow. Right. Uh, anyway, so the catastrophic accident during the final launch preparations for the severe SLV launch at uh, Senman launch site on one site one in Iran. I, I wish I ran the best wishes and good luck in determining what happened. Uh, <laughs> that's like he's being sarcastic. Well, uh, that, and that's what it says here. Given Washington's repeated criticism of Iran's peaceful space program, it right. is not immediately clear if the president was being sarcastic. Uh, I think it's pretty clear. I, yeah, I, it's I, pretty I, fucking clear he's <laughs> being sarcastic. So uh, anyway, I, just, I mean, come on, dude. He's like, so he is transparent in a way because you can see right through the fucker. Yeah. You can, right? Yeah, but not uh, the way that they want want to be thought of. So you know? he's, he's like he's just poking them with a the stick, saying, "Ha yep. ha, you can't prove it. We did it. There's no exactly. way. There's he, no way. He, that's exactly what he's doing. And the, this, the U.S. is involved in that. I guarantee you that. And, and this final article I'm going to do because uh, we got oh, we yeah. have a couple more minutes. Oh yeah, we got. Yeah. No, no, wait, no, we don't have any more minutes. All right, I'm out of time. Okay. All right, uh, <laughs> so I'll just give you the, the basic part here. Uh, okay. From the Daily Star at co. uk. Okay. Sex robots with coding errors, prone uh -oh. to violence, uh -oh. and could strangle humans. 
<laughs> they got this creepy robot here. Anyway, it says uh, that, that these robots... Why do you keep opening up videos? Stop that. <laughs> Sex robots plagued with coding errors could be prone to violent behavior, including strangling. An expert has warned. <laughs> Great. So, <laughs> Great. You want that sex box so bad, huh? Oh uh, Yeah, uh, apparently. You want them to strangle uh, you in your sleep. Okay, that would be good. <laughs> so he believes a simple coding error could turn AI girlfriends against their owners <laughs> if, they, if they are equipped with or free... Boyfriends, or, it, boyfriends. Uh, or, or boyfriends. Or boyfriends. Or boyfriends. Why are sex boxes only perceived as female? That's bullshit. Well, that's the ones that... Any gender you it, want, it, you it, can pick which... You can even pick dual gender. It sells better. It sells yeah. better. Anyway, well, so it could turn their AI girlfriends against their owners if they're equipped with free will. How is that different than an actual girl? Right. <laughs> All right, well, we got to do our last set here. <laughs> Not right. Yeah, 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 thanks. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> All right, enjoy, people. Oh, man, I tell you. Well, where was the... Yeah, that's the right one. Okay. <laughs> And remember, all you need... <laughs> oh, yeah, girls, yeah, did a fine job there. That's Larkin Poe, uh, back from 2017 at the Pace Studios. The only good thing ever to come out of Pace Studios, Larkin Poe, Black Betty. Uh, before that, we had the uh, what is called here in the title of the video the best guitar duel ever. Joe Bonamassa and Eric Gales covering John or doing John uh, Joe Bonamassa's John Henry there. Uh, and and I don't normally play songs that are 13 minutes long, but you know it's worth it. Sometimes it's worth it because man, what a show! Anyway, we kicked it off with. Uh, yep. Uh, Ronald Reggae, and all you need is weed. Uh, right. <laughs> I agree. All you need is weed. All right. Uh, anyway, that's going to wrap it up uh, yep. for us here tonight. Tomorrow you get the dark table at noon Eastern with Flash and somebody probably. Uh, Someone. Who knows? He usually gets a co-hostage or two on yeah. his uh, program. I'll be on a Sunday at noon Eastern with the Blues, three hours, uh, leading right on up into Hell Anthony behind the woodshed, opening up the big old can of whoop ass. And then I'll be back. I'll be back on uh, Monday evening, 7 p.m. Eastern, with Grim Leftovers. Check the schedule on ReallyMedia.com for the rest. Uh, no more Grammy yeah. on Wednesday and Friday, sadly. No. But, uh, for the time being. For anyway. the time being, yeah. You know. Who knows how long yeah. or, or if forever, but whatever. Yep. Um, we're going to miss you, Grammy. We will. That's all I could say. For sure. All right, folks. Uh, thanks to everyone for being part of the show, being part of Real Liberty Media, joining in the chat, requesting songs, all that great stuff. If I didn't get to your request this week, it'll happen in a future week. Eventually. <laughs> yep. All right, y'all have yourselves a great Labor Day weekend. For those of you that get the extra day off, you work yep. in stiffs. Um, <laughs> yeah, I have the day off on Monday, so it's a long weekend for me. Sweet, sweet. Yeah. All right, well, we'll talk to y'all later. See y'all later. Peace. Yep. Peace. <laughs>